Hi there. Me, your friendly neighborhood, neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. Great. The aphasia begins again. So, for those of you that are in the crowd that have been monitoring my lack of follicle or major encouragement of follicle disorganization, um, you'll notice it's organized. So, today we're going to discuss uh, social stigma with stroke. So, a couple of reasons. One, I officially went into work today and gave them my, my notice to uh, come back to work and how I'm going to do that in a structured manner. And once I'm at, back into the work swing of things, I'm going to do a series of videos on return to work and stroke. Um, mainly because, hot button topic, if you're under 50 and you've had a stroke, you kind of identify a lot with being able to get up out of the house and go to work. So I'm going to try to to do that, right? To, to do a video about returning to work, um, the importance of work. But right now we're just going to discuss the social segments, social stigma and stroke. So, a couple reasons why there's, there can be significant social stigma when it comes to stroke and your younger stroke folk. Um, one, there's a high potentiality for, uh, uh, Depression and anxiety, right? So you now have a higher likelihood for depression and or anxiety. You also exponentially put yourself at a significantly higher risk for Alzheimer's or dementia. Early onset, right? So you now have to consider the fact that you might forget who you are 15 years sooner than you probably should have. So for having had a stroke... I have to accept some realities now. Um, reality one, I have a high likelihood of developing depression. I'm doing everything I can to set that off, right? Or, or make that not happen. Uh, two, there's a high likelihood of anxiety. Well, I'm there. Uh, recently got on a new medication that has drastically improved my, my quality of life, um, my ability to sleep. You know, and it, it's right now I've only been had it for a week and it's been a godsend. Absolutely just amazing. So think about it. I could have depression. I am going through anxiety um, for various reasons. Uh, and then I now have to accept the fact that within five to ten years, I could forget who I am. And there's nothing I can do about it. Like, literally, figuratively, actually... There is nothing I can do about it. And that's simply because I now have brain damage. Right? Yes, I realize there's a few in the crowd, a couple of you in the background, that are going to say, but your brain was already damaged. Yeah, I know. Thank you. So, again, I've done a bit of research about this so you can sort of see some of where I've gotten my research. One document is out of Australia. One is out of Scotland. Uh, one is from Stroke Smart, and one is a scholarly article written by a series of academics. So, let's just look at some of the realities of what it means to have social sig stigma with a stroke. Right? And it's, it's nobody's fault, right? Like, there's no, it's not anyone's fault that you're going to have this problem. It's unfortunately a byproduct of the stroke. There's nothing you can do about it. Um... Now, one of the documents indicated that one of the easiest ways to offset the potentiality of anxiety and or depression is if three people that do not live in that stroke, suffer, a victim, assaulter, survivor, whatever adjective you used to use, and I prefer stroke assaulter, because I'm not surviving this and I'm not going to be a victim of my stroke. I'm going to assault through this bitch and find the objective on the other side. Right? If only three people a week that are not related to that individual who's had the stroke can visit them in their home or assist them with things they need to do out in the world, that greatly, significantly improves the likelihood of a positive outcome. Right? A likelihood that don't feel isolated. 
a likelihood that they don't be don't start to develop depression or anxiety because they're worried about how they're going to be perceived in the world. That's one of my biggest concerns when it comes to my anxiety. Do I look... This is going to sound like a lot of duality, and I get that. Do I look normal enough, right? And do people actually think I'm not faking? Right? Do I look impacted enough, right? Because unless you knew me before the stroke, um, or you had the funness to watch it happen, um, you, you probably never know. I had a stroke, unless you got to see me at one of the really shitty moments where the aphasia is kicking in, the the apraxia is back, I'm just confused as fuck, and my gait is shot. That still happens. Um, so, you have that duality, right? Do I look normal enough, right? And do people think I'm not faking? Right? Do I look sick enough? Injured enough? Ill enough? Um, damaged enough? Like, pick a negative adjective or noun and then throw it in with the word enough, right? Um, well, there are days where you're never going to know I had a stroke. Like, just legit, you won't know. And there are days where you might have an idea something's up, but you won't know what. Right? So, for those of you that are friends and family of someone who's had a stroke, find you and two more. Right? Organize a visiting schedule. Organize a let's go to the store schedule like simple little things that can help that individual who has had the stroke feel still connected to their friends their family and their world and the world outside because I know what it's like to have an idea of what you might have wanted to do that day and all of a sudden you realize you can't get out of bed like, like that is not going to happen so you have to call a friend to like, hey, can you do some grocery shopping for me? I'll give you my bank card. I just need like six things and I can't get out of the house today. I, I legitimately cannot get out of bed. Right? I've been there. It, it is a shitty, shitty thing. Right? So, one of the concerns you're going to have having had a stroke is, you know, the depression, the anxiety, and then, you know, you have to face some hard realities you're now at a higher likelihood for other neurological events later in life, let alone, you know, another stroke. Right? Other things you're going to have to look at, right, is your identity and your personality. Now, if your the brain damage caused by your stroke is significant, right, your personality is probably going to change. Right? Um, if the damage due to your stroke is significant, your level of mobility is probably going to change. If the damage because of your stroke is significant, you're probably going to end up with communication deficits, right? So, any, and, if, and if it's not, right, like I, my stroke, luckily, my stroke was in the middle range of the moderate scale when I was in the middle of my stroke, right? I've seen the scores. Um, I was in the middle of the moderate range of a stroke. Luckily, when they did the testing 24 hours after my stroke, the damage was not significant. Right? I, I'm, I'm incredulously, stupefyingly lucky. And I, I admit that. However, even though my deficits for mobility and my deficits for communication are not significant, and I've had a little bit of a personality change that I've noticed. Um, others may not, right? It's still different, right? There are days where I may not recognize myself in the mirror, right? And, and it, that's not some sort of dementia kind of thing. It's just, I'm not really sure who that guy is. I know I know him, but I'm not really sure, right? Now, consider what you, what you believe people might be seeing out in the world or... What are people perceiving and how do they treat you, right? Um, unfortunately, there are a couple, you are going to have some people, they're just going to accept the fact you've had a stroke and they're not going to treat you any different, right? 
they're, they might be a bit more empathetic to your situation, but they are going to be true friends. They're not going to treat you any significantly differently, right? You're going to have some people that are going to back away. Um, they're really not what, sure what to do. They're afraid they're going to damage you somehow, right? We can forgive them, right? You then have that special brand and breed of asshole um, who are horrible humans. Um, you will have people just stop talking to you. They will, they will actively ignore you. You will be standing six feet from them, right? They won't even bother to come over and say, hey, how you doing? Right? You're going to have people that are going to treat you like, you know, I think you're a friend. I think I can have a conversation with you about where I'm at right now because I'm in a really shitty place. And you're going to be treated like you're looking for a pity party. You know, you're going to be treated in a manner in which you're going to wonder, well, wait a minute. I thought you were a friend. Right? You're going to learn who you can trust and who you cannot trust. And it's a shitty thing, right? It's a completely shitty thing. Unfortunately, there's no way around it, right? You really want to find out who there, who's going to be there when it counts? Have a stroke. I'm serious. If you really want to find out who in your world matters, have a stroke. You'll find out who matters, right? Because they're going to step up and show up. The ones that really don't matter, they're going to give you bullshit, useless advice. They're going to actively not listen to your concerns. And then they're going to accuse you of trying to have a pity party. Or they're just going to actually ignore you. You know, it happens, unfortunately. Other reasons why you're going to have stigma, you know, socially because of a stroke. So if it wasn't for the depression and the anxiety, the possibility of other neurological disorders, right? The fact that, you know, um, your identity may change, your personality may change, right? Because my humor, and I used a lot of humor when I was having the really scary moments of the stroke. Um, I used a lot of humor because I was scared shitless. This, this is just the reality of the situation. I threw my stroke around 10 to 10.30 in the morning on a Thursday. I had the drug that saved my life by 1.32, I think. I don't remember exact timings. Um, I can remember being scared. And I don't mean like, I think I heard something downstairs and I might need to go check that out, kind of scared. I mean, I was scared that I was never going to wake up again that I was going to wake up having a stroke again. So when I was in the hospital, I could not and I would not sleep. That's how scared I was. Um, you are going, that's going to change you, right? Um, you know, you're going to have to, you know, it, it's, it's a surreal experience. But if you really want to find out who matters in your world, throw a stroke. Yeah. People that step up and stand up, you can hold on to them. People that don't, get rid of them. Right. So with social isolation, right, you may have the inability to make contact with the outside world. Right. You might be walker bound, wheelchair bound. You might not be able to get out of bed. You might be in a rehab and recovery facility. You might spend three weeks in the hospital for them to transfer you for another three months to another hospital. Right. Right. So all and like I said before, with the social isolation, if you want to avoid anxiety and depression and someone that's having a stroke, right? If you know someone that has had a stroke, right, or even brain injury, all you need to do is find you and two other friends that know that person and arrange a visiting schedule. You will not know um, exactly the level of assistance you're going to provide, right? There's other things. What if you have a communication deficit, right? You've got aphasia. Did Forget what kind of aphasia. My aphasia, I couldn't get my message out. I understood exactly what you were telling me. Me For me to order breakfast, to sit down and prepare for lunch, because it'll take me an hour to get it out, right? And then forgiving 
you know, social isolation outside your home, right? Let's consider social isolation inside your home. Your roles are going to change. What you are able to do or not to do is going to drastically change, right? So there are other reasons why people might have social, social stigma due to stroke. Right? Now, if I go off the document from Scotland, and they indicate a back-to-life survey in 2008, they interviewed 280 people with stroke, and they found that 90% of them had difficulty speaking or explaining things when talking on the phone. Okay? They have a form of aphasia, or they have some other neurological deficits that they can't really describe right, things on the phone. Some have difficulty writing. Now, is that actually communicating in a written form or is that having a dexterity issue and actually doing the writing, right? 80% of difficulties using the internet, right? So how hard can it be to use the internet, you say? Well, I'm glad you asked. So just search for something simple, right? Um, that doesn't provoke, you know, pictures of naughty bits. Um, you're looking for a recipe, right? Whatever that is, chocolate chip cookies, pancakes, polenta, what have you, right? So you you type in what you believe is the right words. Turns out it's not, right? So you have some form of deficit where spelling and grammar, grammar and syntax is an issue, or you type in the right phrases, but now you're overwhelmed by the results and you don't know which one to pick, right? Um, 60% had difficulty reading newspapers, letters, and leaflets, right? Um, a third, um, had difficulty understanding what people were saying. 90% indicated communication difficulties had affected their independence. Right? So, a lot reported they had problems with this, and a few reported they had problems with that, and a third, but 90% said that communication difficulties impacted their independence, right? And 80% reported their confidence had suffered, that communication problems impacted their social and their work life. So because of their communication deficits or difficulties, whatever that may be, um, that could be, you know, any form of aphasia, that could be apraxia, uh, like anything to do with you have an inability to like, communicate effectively. 80% felt that it somehow impacted either their social and or their work worlds, right? So just think about that. Go to work. How much of your work day is involved in communicating with either coworkers, colleagues, um, your boss, uh, other people in and around where you work that you might need assistance with or from, right? in a professional sense, uh, dealing with clients. So if you have to deal with, you know, working with another organization that is not your parent organization, so you're either receiving calls from or making calls to. If you're involved in some kind of support role in your place of employment, then you get an email. And you're not really sure what it says because it's kind of confusing, or at least you find it confusing. Now you feel the need to speak up and go, ah, I didn't quite understand what that meant. Uh, please don't fire me. You know, like think, just think about that. Um, and then when you get back to work, right, are people going to take the time to be patient, to understand the journey that that stroke assault has been through, right? Are people going to take the time to understand that that individual may have had a stroke, but the stroke is not the individual? Are the people that you work with willing to take the time to make some of those, the little accommodations to make your day easier, right? That all depends on where you work and who you work with, right? Um, and again, that all comes down to you know, that whole argument I'm suffering through, do I look normal enough and do people think I'm not faking? <laughs> you know, because like right now I have my contacts in and if I go out in the world, 
I have to wear my sunglasses. At home, I'm fine because the lighting I have at home is not the kind of lighting that sets my brain off. But when I go out into fluorescent lights, I got to put them on, right? So some people might see that as duality, right? Well, you don't wear them at home. Well, I don't need them at home. It's the type of light. It's not just light. It's the type of light. So there are a lot of problems that people that have had stroke and, and young people that have had stroke are going to face with social stigma, right? And depending on how impacting your stroke was, depending on how life devastating that stroke was, will depend on how long those deficits may or may not stick around. Um, I am hoping, touch wood, that within 24 months after my stroke, you'll never know. Right? That is my goal. 24 months after my stroke, right? you should never know I've had one. If you've never met me before. Um, that's my goal. Right? I realize the stroke is going to be a very difficult thing to resolve. Um, it's not something you're ever going to get over. Because um, luckily I'm brain damaged now. So, yeah, I know, I know, there's those in the crowd that would say, damage before, I get it. Um, so, but all I'm going to ask is, anyone have you watching this, if you are the stroke assaulter and you are trying to get through your own post-stroke journey, right, reach out to your support system, right, and, and make them understand what you need, right? The, the more people around you understand what you need to be successful in your outcome, the more likely they're there to help you and the less stigma you will have with those immediately around you. Um, and then as you reintroduce yourself to the world, do so on your terms. Tell them, I've had a stroke. This is what I need right now. And I need it for a little while, or I'm going to need it for a long while, or I have no idea, but I need you to do this for me so I can be successful. Right? For those of you that are supporting the stroke assaulter, right to help them with their anxiety and potential depression and social isolation all you need is you and two other people to arrange a, a schedule of visiting that it, that are not related to or live with that individual right so luckily i have really good friends and i had a bevy of people in the initial month or three after my stroke that were brilliant um and that being said, I owe a debt of gratitude to them. And the last thing, for those that are supporting someone going through the recovery of a stroke, you got to be present and you got to be patient, right? Um, them trying to navigate this obstacle course is a shitty enough deal on their own. There's not much they can do some days to help themselves. Right? There, are, there are some days that are just going to be heinous absolutely heinous right the only easy day was yesterday the only day that's going to get better could be tomorrow right it, that's it's about that simple because today's going to suck there are other days that are going to be really relatively carefree days right so you got to take the fact that some other days are going to be really good days and some other days are just going to be wretched absolutely wretched it's nobody's fault just be patient just be present right and be mindful that they are literally going through the fight for their life, their identity, right? Who they perceive themselves to have been and how they want themselves to be perceived when this is over. And that is probably one of the most difficult things having had a stroke. It's like you want to be, you know how you were two days ago, 10 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, three weeks ago. You knew what your life was like before the stroke. You don't want to be perceived for the rest of your life as the stroke guy. Think about that. Would you want a two-hour period of your life that is outside your control, that you didn't ask for, that isn't some heinous, vile, evil act, you know, like you didn't commit a crime and hurt people. Your brain just tried to kill you. And you went... From standing and having a conversation to lying on the floor or whatever the case may be, right? Would you want that two hour in period of your life or 15 minute period of your life 
to be the sole defining factor for the remainder of your days. Just, no, fuck no. Right? That's why my goal is two years after the stroke, so you'd never know. Like, that that's my goal. So that once I get to a certain spot, you would never know I've had a stroke. So, on that note, all I can ask is if you happen to know someone going through a stroke, just be patient, just be present, right? And just be mindful. Right? For those of you that are going through a stroke, it's a shitty deal. It can be, right? There, there are going to be rough days, and there are going to be better days. But initially, just do what you can and ask for help for the rest. That's all I can say. Do what you can and ask for help for the rest, right? And if you happen to like what you've been watching over the last little over five months, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone that's going through the journey of their own journey after a stroke, again, point the channel out to them. Maybe they can get some value out of it. So you know someone that's going through and supporting someone post recovery of a stroke, again, point the channel out to them. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, like someone looks befuddled or confused, someone that's having vision problems, right? Immediate eye problems or like blurry vision, stars, uh, blind in one eye, you know, everything goes grayscale, what have you. Uh, then you got your facial droop. So your face, one of the sides of your face droops. In my case, it was my right hand side. Um, then you happen to have arms. They can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. You then have um, speech, slurred, stuttering, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. They're not able to smile equally, appropriately, uh, or at all. Uh, they, they're they unable to um, maintain their own body weight, you know, so they, they can't stand unaided. Uh, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.